Let's see how the simple folks of Yellowstone raise their children. When someone threw a rock at his father, Tay fought back angrily. Well, like father, like son, his father was a retired Navy SEAL, and his grandfather was John, the owner of the Yellowstone Ranch. Tay's personality was right up their alley. Kais was taking his son for a drive when he came across a suspicious car. He approached the vehicle with his gun and found a kidnapped girl. Daddy? Get back the truck. Oh my god, he almost killed his father by shouting. Luckily, Kais was a soldier and reacted very quickly. He saw that he couldn't be bullied and drove away. Then he told his son to hide in a pipe while he drove after him. I guess that's why fathers aren't allowed to bring up their kids alone. While hiding in the pipe, Tay turned around and saw a rattlesnake on vacation. Tay grabbed a rock and threw it at the cobra, but missed. The rattlesnake showed no mercy to the guy, who was taking over his territory and attacking him. This side was biting desperately, the other side was kicking desperately. After a fierce struggle, when Kais came back, he found his son holding a hundred pound snake in his hand. It's worthy of being his son, and Kais was not idle just now. In order to save the girl, he used the rope in his hand to hook the robber and let his head and the earth have a close contact with the ground, and lost his breath on the spot. Kais wanted to report it to the police, but the girl didn't want to disclose how she was bullied. So he cleaned up the scene and sent the girl home. When the girl's family found out, they went with Kais to dispose of the body and set a fire to destroy it. But they were unexpected circumstances. A real estate development company accidentally dug up human bones during construction. Soon after, Indian Reservation Police and Indian Chief Rainwater arrived at the scene and ordered them to stop work for the time being. The manager asked who would be responsible if they missed the deadline. Rainwater broke the leg bone in half and threatened to shut him up. They then analyzed the bullet in the victim's body and determined that Caius was the one who killed him. Soon Caius was invited by the Indian Reservation Police for tea. When John found out about this, he sent his second son Jamie to bring him back. In the meantime, Caius explained the whole story. Although his actions were self-defense, he was guilty of destroying the body. At this time, Jamie arrived at the scene because the police judged that Kais was related to the incident through the ballistics, so he said that he wanted to see the search warrant for the seizure of weapons. But the sheriff said he didn't need a warrant because the ballistics were on file. He didn't understand how a civilian gun could have ballistics on file. Oh, it was, uh, it was his barrel. He traded. But it makes even less sense. The sheriff's taking a public weapon in exchange for a civilian's. Jamie used it as a way to silence the police. Eventually the sheriff switched the barrels back with Kais after his skillful talking. Good job, Jamie's word really counts. At Rainwater's behest, the barrels were exchanged. Now that the only physical evidence was gone, Kais was quickly acquitted on the spot. After this incident, Rainwater had to re-examine the strength of the Yellowstone Ranch. Oh, lawyers don't scare me. They should. No one knows how to break the law better. What would you do if a bunch of Chinese tourists broke into your house and didn't want to leave? The old Chinese man even said that such a big piece of land should be shared by all. So what's the big deal if it's his home? These Chinese don't know whose territory they're trespassing on. This is Yellowstone Ranch. When faced with an invader with a pointless argument, John taught them how to behave. But he did it mainly because of the brown bear not far away. If the Chinese don't leave, they'll probably be eaten by the bear. Even though the bear was a danger to the ranch, it was endangered, so the cowboys couldn't touch it. One day Jimmy was walking his horse in the woods when he came across a bear and was chased by it. With no way to run, he climbs a small tree that could fall at any moment. When the bear saw the food, it shook the trunk like crazy. It was waiting for Jimmy to fall out of the tree and into its mouth. Luckily, his teammates heard the call for help and rode up to save Jimmy by lassoing the bear with a rope. Ever since he was branded a Yellowstone, he's either been beaten up or chased by animals. It looked like everyone in Yellowstone was showing off, but Jimmy was getting beat up. It wasn't long before it got back to John. For the safety of the cowboys and cattle, he sent Rip, the Yellowstone warrior, to chase the bears away. When Rip found the bear's target location, he was halfway there when he heard someone calling for help. When he got to the edge of the cliff, he saw two Chinese tourists jumping to avoid the bears. Then Rip threw the rope off the cliff and told the woman that only one person could come up at a time, but she wanted to give her boyfriend first dibs on the chance of survival. And outrageously, so did her boyfriend. While they're arguing, the woman accidentally falls off the cliff. Rip had to ask the man to hold onto the rope, but the man was already frustrated and was going to let go to join his girlfriend. As Rip fell to the ground from the reaction, he turned around and ran into a brown bear that jumped at him. Luckily, he's one of Yellowstone's fastest shooters. The state troopers came and took care of the situation. 
The sheriff suspected that Rip had been illegally hunting endangered animals in the area, and that it had thrown the tourists off the cliff when they saw it. John felt that someone was framing his family. Even the sheriff, whom he had promoted, had turned on him. Rip had no other evidence to prove his innocence. It wasn't long before the animal control people found him. Rip was ready to show her the scene of the accident himself. But as soon as they met, the policewoman gave him a hard time. Then the two of them set off for the scene of the accident. Rip saw a horse flea on the officer's horse's ass. He warns her of the danger, but she ignores him. And the next thing he knew, you lost the wings! Yes! Rip rushed to catch up with her on horseback. But when he found the policewoman, she had been thrown to the ground by the horse and her body had been pierced by a fence. Now things are in trouble. She couldn't die here, or else Rip wouldn't be cleared of any wrongdoing. He immediately called the ranch for a helicopter. To prevent secondary injuries, Rip cuts the fence and lets the pony go. Then he carries the policewoman and approves the fence. The pain was so intense that she had to trust and rely on this man. Fortunately, the helicopter arrived in time to rescue the policewoman, but when they arrived at the scene of the accident the next day, the bear's body had already been eaten by the beasts. With the evidence destroyed, all they could do was look at Rip and the bear's position to determine if Rip had acted in self-defense. But no shell casings were found in the location he described, which means Rip was lying. Only John could see the connection. John then got his own shotgun and crouched down in Rip's position and fired several rounds. And without fail, the shell casings fell into place. He knew Rip wouldn't lie to him. John saw that the sheriff's hand did not look natural, so he asked the sheriff to pull out something in his pocket. And sure enough, it was the bullets that Rip had dropped. The sheriff immediately lied that he had forgotten the bullets had been found. The animal control people ruled that the distance between Rip and the bear constituted self-defense on Rip's part. But the sheriff continued to say that he didn't believe Rip's claims because he had also pulled to dead bodies from the canyon. So all John could say was what he'd investigated. I've heard you've recently taken out a membership at the sports club. Can you afford it on your share of Sally? I'm starting on this, Tony. Just made your way on it. John was helpless, now realizing that the man he trained had the nerve to betray him. Looks like he's gonna have to do something to get people to recognize Yellowstone again. A bunch of motorcyclists were having a party when they were stopped by some Yellowstone cowboys because it was a private ranch. But this bearded man didn't care and taunted them as rednecks. Little did they know they'd be paying for it in blood. Then the fight started. But because they were outnumbered, Yellowstone's men were quickly overwhelmed and kicked and punched. When Rip, the god of war, happened to pass by and saw his teammates being trampled by a group of people, he lost his temper. He crashed down scenes of their motorcycles in his pickup truck. He stepped out of the car with an iron bar. The motorcyclists pulled out their knives. Rip immediately threw the crowbar in his opponent's face. And the old cowboy stuck his knife up his ass. With the Yellowstone warlord at the helm, the tables are turned. One of the bikers pulls a gun on Rip. But instead of dodging, Rip rushes up, grabs the gun, and shoots him down. One of these assholes is the boss of you. Rip then gave a final warning to their boss, or he would bury them. The bikers walked out of the ranch in disgrace, having never suffered such a defeat before. The old cowboy warned Rip that they'd be back. Sure enough, later that night, the fools returned to the ranch. They each took the barrels of gasoline and tried to set the ranch on fire. Instead, they ran into John, the rancher. The bearded man and the others didn't panic, because this time they were prepared. John just Saturday down and began to lecture them. This is my home. If I did this to your home, what would you do? I'd kill you. As soon as the words left his mouth, light after light came from all directions. The Yellowstone Cowboys surrounded them with killing guns. John took out his shovel. The bearded man was regretting it, but it was too late for him to leave. John left them to dig their own holes. After watching the holes take shape, All right, that's enough. Nobody said get out. Yeah, not much point now. The bearded man was dumbfounded and begged for forgiveness, saying he had a family to feed and begged John to let him go. John, of course, didn't give a rat's ass about these young fools. However, John owns the largest private estate in the United States, which means he has a lot more problems than that. The Indian reservation neighboring his home coveted the Yellowstone Ranch. Indian Chief Rainwater approached the developer about developing a casino, mall and upscale villas near Yellowstone Ranch. He could provide the working capital so they could raise the price of the ranch land and then the high taxes would take a toll on John. But Rainwater had underestimated Yellowstone's tactics because their ambitions were being monitored in real time. When John learned of this, he gave Rip the order to settle the matter once and for all. The next day after receiving the order, Rip brought his men to the real estate developer. When he saw Yellowstone's men, the real estate developer was so scared that he ran away, but he fell into Kai's arms. 
He was kidnapped by the Yellowstones without realizing it. He was home from a tree in the countryside. When he found out that he wanted to put Yellowstone to death, Kais, as John's son, couldn't suppress his anger any longer. Kais didn't hesitate to cut the rope and let him go to another world. 